Alrighty, guys, welcome back to the Identity Project. Uh, today is a very special day, one day after my baby boy Josiah came into the world. Um, so I am running off a caffeine drip here and excited more than ever to have my man Landon Pobrin on. How are you, my man? I'm doing great, man. Doing great. Thank you very much for having me on. Congratulations is in order. I appreciate you having me on, even though, you know, you got a, a little little baby boy there. But, uh, you know, congratulations. I'm super, super happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been a, it's been a whirlwind over the last 48 hours for sure. Uh, but I'll probably have a whole podcast de dedicated to that. So, so I'll talk about that later. But today it's all about you, my man. I want to dive into kind of what we do with pretty much every guest we have on the show. I want to dive into your story. Um, and then from there, I want to translate uh, in, or not translate. I want to kind of shift into how we can help all of the trainers and coaches that are out there because you and I have been in the game. You've been in it longer than I have. Um, and I know that I made and I still make so many mistakes. Um, so, dude, let's start with your story and we'll kind of go from there. Awesome. Yeah. So. You know, when, when I think back to kind of my story and where everything started, you know, I'm like two distinct things. I was a computer nerd and a fitness junkie. So, you know, they, these two things were kind of like parallels throughout my, my entire life. So I can remember like super far back, you know, building computers, tinkering around with computers, always being super into kind of like technology. But at the same time, like I started playing sports at a very, very young age. So it was kind of like, you know, you tend to think of these things being kind of like polar opposites, but they kind of ran parallel for my entire life. And what really eventually happened was as I kind of got older, they were both always still there. But the, the tech side of things and computers, technology, marketing, design, all of that stuff was kind of driving the engine forward. That was where I was going to school to become educated. Um, you know, I went to a very specific high, like high school based from like junior high into high school based on the, this digital marketing course that I was going to take that they offered at this high school. You know, through that, I went into college based on a course that I was taking called digital and interactive media design. You know, like this was the, the path I was charting was being largely driven on the career side from kind of like, you know, the tech kind of nerdy stuff. But all along, I was, you know, an athlete. So I think it was, I was maybe 10 when I started like competitively playing basketball. And, you know, from there, like, you know, I grew up, my brothers played sports their entire life. So I was just exposed to it. You know, my parents would pull me out of school to go to like tournaments and watch my brothers when I was like, you know, five, six, seven years old. You know, I can remember getting my first pair of Jordans. I think I was 10. And uh, man, like if I could go buy those now, I would love to, but they just don't make them like they used to. You know, they're, they're trying to bring back all the retro stuff now, but I wish I could have that, that pair of Jordans back. I have, but, to, I have to pause you for a quick second, Landon. The, the second I knew I liked you was when we met and you went out that night and you had Jordans on. And I was like, yeah, I like this guy. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, you know, I was, you know, competitive athlete, played, played sports. And that's pretty much where I eventually got into working out was to better my performance in the gym. And, you know, as these, these two things kind of like went in parallel with each other, you know, I eventually played fairly high competitive uh, volleyball is kind of where, you know, I hit the point where I had to decide between volleyball and basketball to play. I chose volleyball. That's where, you know, my passion was, I was a little bit better at it as well. Um, I think in our like juvenile years, the best we did was, I believe, fifth place in Canada for nationals, my last year playing before I went on to college, screwed up my shoulder, and then kind of sports was done from there. And that's where I just kind of immersed myself into working out. That's pretty much where that train kind of went. But all along, like, I was essentially working as an entrepreneur from like, literally, I don't know if I would have been in like high school or junior high school, like, you know, 15 years old. And I was building computers and selling computers to people. I was building websites for people at that age, you know, building websites for like my dad's company and all of this stuff. So it was like athlete and computer nerd at, at the same time. And it eventually hit a point where, 
they kind of flip-flopped in terms of where the career was being drawn from. And that was um, probably about 2000 in like 13 ish is kind of where, you know, they ended up transitioning. So I hit a point where uh, my wife, Laura had started working within the fitness industry. She had went to, to school, got certified and she was training and I just kind of started to, the, the passion started to take over. So, you know, all along while I was running a marketing company, you know, my spare time was obviously working out as a hobby. And then my spare time was starting to being taken up by like reading research and looking into all of these sorts of things. And, you know, I had been started bodybuilding in 2010. So I was already on the competitive side there. And then just reading more, you know, started with the magazines and then started with, you know, the articles. And then it was like, you know, the research reviews and, you know, starting to dig into like PubMed and read research. And, you know, I hit a point where I was like, you know, I want to be able to help other people with this. So I actually completely stopped my marketing career and got certified as a personal trainer and started working as a personal trainer. And it's, it's, it's pretty crazy to think kind of how everything blossomed, but it was, you know, I was new to that industry, but I wasn't new to, you know, building a business and I wasn't new to marketing. Um, so within a short period of time, you know, my wife and I, we left the facility that we were working at. We started working for ourselves. We opened up a small personal training studio. It was about uh, like 16, 1700 square feet. You know, soon thereafter, within a, a year or two, we outgrew that. We opened up a large facility that was 6,000 square feet. Uh, we had a team of eight at our peak, you know, owning that business, doing nutrition, uh, personal training. And then we eventually made in late last year, we made the decision that we completely closed down that facility and moved exclusively into the online space. And now I sit, now I work as a consultant helping, you know, online coaches build their business. So it's, it's been a really interesting process over the years, marrying the two of this kind of like tech background and marketing and computers with this passion for fitness. You know, one was like the lead driver then the other one was the lead driver of my business. And now they've just literally completely merged. And that's what I do for, for work now. Wow. That's crazy, man. I mean, I, I just think about like all the transitions that you had there. Well, and one, let me ask the question. Was you, did you say your dad was a business owner? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you had, and mine was too. So there was like, you had that entrepreneurial, I don't know, at least you saw it. Like, you know, like I knew for me, it was like my dad, he, I don't know, kind of like a entrepreneur because he, he had his own business, but he also worked for like another business too. Um, but for him, it was like, he was never, ever, ever home. Like he worked his ass off. Like he, I mean, I got my work ethic from him 100%, but like he was never home. And so that's when I knew like, yes, I want to be a business owner, but like, it's got to be online because I have to be like there at, at my house. Um, but how much of that, like how much did, of your dad being an entrepreneur, like how much did that play into your life? You know, it's, it's difficult to say now, like when I reflect back, I think it just made working for yourself like a, like normal, you know, like my dad ran his own business, you know, he called the shots. He didn't have to answer to other people. Um, you know, my older brother, you know, he was in construction, ran his own business and literally like, I think if I look back, I've had like one job that I was an employee. It was like working for like booster juice when I was like fucking 14 or something. So, you know, outside of that, everything that I've done has been, I've been self-employed for the last like 16 years. So there's been like a dozen different businesses throughout that 16 year period, but it just always seemed so normal. And I think that coming from, you know, parents who ran their own business, I think that was the biggest thing. It, you know, work ethic was a big one, but I think making it just seem like completely normal, you know, uh, most people, if they grow up and their parents are, are employed, they got like, you know, career jobs and, you know, they got pensions and benefits and all these things. The natural thing is to just go to school and go work for someone. But like, my dad didn't even go to high school, you know, like he doesn't have a college degree, you know, none of that was like expected to me. What was natural was running a business. Wow. You know, that's a really interesting point that I never even really thought about for myself. 
Like, that's so true. I mean, there, you know, we live in this world where it's like everybody judges everything. And, you know, a lot of people, I guess entrepreneurship is starting to be more popular now, but like, you know, back in the day, like it, it wasn't popular at all. It was actually look, you know, I heard Gary Vee talk about him as a kid and like, he was like shit on, you know? Um, so that's, that's interesting. I mean, you have me thinking now my, my wheels are turning in my head. I think that definitely, yeah, man, I think that's, that's big. I, I don't even think I ever gave it the credit that it deserved. Yeah. It's, you know, back in the day, like if you, and even in other cultures, like if you run, if you're self-employed, you're usually, usually looked as like, you're not doing well, like you can't find work. So you're just working for yourself. But like, yeah, it, it, it's got so popular. And now like we see it within the fitness industry, everyone and their dog is becoming an online coach because it's super cool. And they, you know, they see guys with like, you know, Ferraris and, you know, laying on the beach working and they think that's what this life is. But we talk, I was, we were just at a wedding this past weekend and I was talking with someone and they're, you know, they've been training for a few months and they're like, Oh, this is so hard. And we're like, like you, you, it's like the iceberg effect. Like they see these people, but they don't see the work that's been put in behind the scenes to be able to create what like looks like an overnight success. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so true and and that's actually one point i want to kind of dive into here which is like talk to me a little bit about because i know for me like i worked in person for eight years before i ever even jumped online and now i see so many people that like they go get like a certification and within like a month like they're online coaching people and i don't know i mean you know, not that it's like right or wrong or whatever but i just i i want to hear your opinion on like what, like, if you had to start with somebody from the very, very beginning, like, do you think that you would want them to work with people in person before you work with people online or? It's difficult because I agree. I think so many people are now skipping steps, like throughout that journey. Everybody's trying to like leapfrog and like do it faster. And there's just certain things that you can't replace. And one of them is experience. And it's experience working with people. And that's what you get when you work as an in-person trainer. You have the ability to simply work with people. You understand how to like troubleshoot their needs. You understand how to deal with their issues. You understand what their actual goals are. And that's one of the things I really see with people that have never gone through that or don't have a lot of experience within the industry. They just, they're like a coach but they don't know what it means. They don't know who they're trying to help. They just see other people doing it and you can, you know, take a $300 certification and call yourself a coach, you know, even within nutrition, it legitimately is not regulated in like most places. It's not regulated in Canada. It's only regulated in like some States within the U S outside of being like an RD, like you don't even need a certification. Like in Canada being called a nutritionist, is essentially like calling yourself a wellness coach or a life coach. Like there's, it's just a title there, there's nothing behind it. Like there's no actual like accreditation. So you get people that they jump into it, but they haven't gone through the years of actually working with people. And when I look at the term coach, to me, it has nothing to do with anything science related. It's the art of working with people. And when you, when you leapfrog all of that stuff, it's like, cool, you, you understand calories, you understand, you know, nutrient timing and all of these things, but you have no idea how to help someone. Cause at the end of the day, people are buying the, they're buying coaching, not the coach. Like they're buying a result. They're buying the outcome that you're trying to help them get to. And all of that science stuff does, is not helping them get there. If you can't troubleshoot them as a person, they're never going to get to that end goal because, you know, we know it's like, you know that they need to eat less food, but it's helping them come to the realization of what they need to change in their life that allows them to actually be able to eat less food. And you just lose out on that entire process of understanding how to work with people when you skip it. So it's like, I don't think it's required but I definitely feel like it helps you hone and refine the skills to become and kind of have like a head start when you get into it. Yeah. 
I completely agree. And I, and I think, I mean, I, I did start in the field at a young age. I was 18 years old. So, I mean, I'm sure from like a maturity factor, a lot of that played into it too. But I mean, I just think back, I'm like, if I would have started my online coaching business the first year that I started in this field, like there is no way in hell I would still be doing this. Um, so I don't know. It's interesting. So, so when people come to you, you know, obviously you work with a lot of other trainers, coaches, like Artie's, like anybody in the nutrition fitness space and you help in terms of like consulting, helping them grow their business. So like, let's say for instance, I don't know, myself came to you and I was like, look, Landon, like I've been following all your content. Like you're putting out a lot of great stuff. Like I just feel stuck, man. Like I've been in the space for a year and I just, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I just don't know what I don't know. So like, talk me through or like walk us through, like, what is, what does this process look like for you? Yeah, absolutely, man. And it's really cool because I can draw so many parallels to, you know, the coaching that I do with people to the coaching that you're doing with your clients as a nutrition coach. And it usually, I love that because it, it really allows me to frame things in a way that people understand. So it's like, you know, what, what's the first thing that you do when a nutrition client comes to you and says, you know, they're trying to, you know, reach X goal, they don't know where they're going wrong. You really just dig into where they're at, what they're doing, what's going on in their life. And you're just trying to paint the picture so you understand what, like where they're at with everything. And that's the exact same thing that I'm doing. You know, I call it like a business audit. I need to know, you know, like how much money are you making? How many clients do you have? You know, are they personal training clients? Are they online training clients? You know, what services do you offer? What are the price points? You know, where are your leads coming from? You know, do you have certain things set up? Like, you know, we got to dig into your goals. Like the, the goal setting is a big one because if somebody has no clear goals, I can't help them create any success. Cause if they're like, you know, I want to achieve success and it's like, cool. Well, somebody could feel successful making a thousand dollars a month and someone might not feel successful until they make a million dollars a year. So it's like, we need to be able to, to outline goals. We need to be able to know where you're starting. So I, we can chart the course and figure out how we need to get there and where there is. So when we start, you know, it's, it's the same thing for everyone, regardless of, you know, if they're just getting started or, you know, they've been doing it for five, 10 years because, for me to best be able to help someone, I need to know, I need to have that picture painted in my head because if I don't, like I, I can't help you get there. Yeah. I love that, man. And, and, you know, I think that individualized coaching, no different than, you know, you mentoring others, like it's cool that you're able to take them through their own process. You're not just like, Hey, here's my freaking templates and go do this and follow. like, no, like, let's build out, like, let's help develop like your business. Like, like, let's not use, you know, all the little fancy tools that are out there because at the end of the day, it's just like nutrition, right? Like the meal plans don't work, bro. Like, you know, it's way deep. Well, I don't want to say that they work for some people depending on your goal, but for most people, like it's so much deeper than that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And like, I'm a huge proponent of, you know, building your business to support the life that you want to live. So within that audit, you know, when we're goal setting, a lot of the questions are like, you know, in 12 months, where do you want to be, you know, financially, professionally, and personally? Like, what do you want your life to look like? You know, just like you said, when you saw your dad was an entrepreneur, but he was never home, you knew that you wanted to run your own business, but you wanted to be home more often. You know, you knew you wanted to build a family and you wanted to be, be there. And that's so important and people lose sight of that so often. They just get so, you know, encapsulated with the process of just working and hustling and trying to get clients that they completely forget about life. And then you hit a point where you're like, they don't know what they do for fun. Like they don't know what fun is anymore. You know, it's like they have downtime and they're like, like, I don't know what to do because all I do is work. And it's like, no, we need to, design your business around the life that you want to live because you can achieve massive success just with yourself. So it's like, if you want to be able to travel the world, then you're going to do certain things throughout the process of building your business. If you want to achieve and mentor others, then you might build a team. 
But if you want to be able to travel all the time, then building a team probably is not what you're going to go about doing to build your business because there are certain responsibilities that come along with doing those things. So it's like, you know, where you want your business to go has to line up with the life that you're trying to live. Cause it's really funny when, you know, I talk to people and I'm like, all right, so you like, you see these two things, do you see how they completely contradict one another? It's like, I want to open up a wellness center, but I want to be able to travel whenever I want. And I'm like, if you open up a wellness center, you're never going to be able to travel for like five to 10 years until it's profitable to a point where you don't have to be there all the time. And they're like, I never thought about that. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's why I'm here. Right. Like, you know, the, the life part is, is super important. Yeah. I, I love that, man. And I, and I think you're completely right. And, and going back to nutrition kind of correlates, right? We always talk about like that triangle of awareness with like performance and aesthetics and health. So it's the people that are trying to chase, you know, performance and aesthetics at the same time and not realizing that they're, you know, they're separate. So um, yeah, man, I, you know, I think, you brought up such a great point, which is like the goal setting, right? Like everybody talks about how important it is to set goals, how important it is to like establish your why. But like the more, I mean, I've been in the field now for almost 10 years. And like, I just realized that like most people, they don't actually know how to set up goals for themselves. Like they don't know, and they might do the superficial stuff, right? But like most people aren't goal setting on a constant basis. Like they're not doing quarterly goal setting or yearly goal setting. And, and even if they are, it's very super, superficial. And it's nothing along the lines of something like you and I went through, which was like going through the body being balanced in business. That, that was super eye-opening for me. Yeah, people... <laughs> When, when people tell me that they're like, they're, they're not really into like, you know, planning and goal setting, you know, I tell them that they're like, they're not really into succeeding or creating any, any type of success. You know, I'm, I'm kind of nerdy when it comes to goal setting. Like I have like, you know, a special freaking planner that I use and it's like very ingrained in my process, the pl like planning, but I feel that it has to be, you have to plan, but you have to be flexible with understanding that certain things are going to change and evolve as you go through it. So what you set up for like, you know, five things that you want to accomplish this year might be, you might not accomplish any of them and you might accomplish five different things, but you have to understand what you're working towards because when you wake up in the morning, you need to know exactly what you're going to be doing that day. And you have to know that the tasks that you're doing are directly correlating to moving you towards, towards what that end goal is. But in order to do that, in order to know what you're doing today, you have to know what you're trying to accomplish, like what project you're doing right now. And is that project helping you towards what you're trying to accomplish this year? So we have to start from like a macro level with planning and then work our way backwards into breaking it down to like, literally what am I doing this week and what am I doing today? And people just simply don't do that because it's hard. A lot of people they want to try and do everything and they think that, you know, by focusing on this, then they're forgetting about that or these little things. And it's like, no, like there's times where you have to prioritize. It's like training, you know, you're not going to grow every muscle in your body efficiently at the exact same time. It's like, you're going to go through a phase where you might be focusing on, you know, chest or shoulders, you know, if you're focusing on hypertrophy and then, you know, you might go through a phase where you're focusing on something else. But if you try and do it all at the same time, there's only so much bandwidth that you have before you're going to burn out. So it's, it's just like there again, right? I love being able to correlate all of this stuff to training and nutrition. Because when I have someone that's being frustrating, I can be like, you know that you're doing exactly what your worst client does when they frustrate you, right? And they're like, shit, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny man I, I mean it's just such a double-edged sword though right because it's like you hear people and they're like you, you got to go all in and then there's some people that are like no you have to find balance and it's like okay well what is it like which one is it you know and you know I think it all goes back to like look I have so many mentors in, in my life and, and they've done so many incredible things for me but like I have to go off of like my own intuition like I can't let other people dictate my decisions in life, you know? And, and I think that that's something that I really probably honestly started realizing more and more just over the last year since I started my business. 
Yeah, absolutely, man. It's just like when you have a, you know, you're coaching somebody on nutrition and you dictate what they need to do. Those people generally are never successful. However, when you have a client come to their own decision about what they want to do, usually they're far more likely to actually be able to stick to that, that habit or those changes that they're actually implementing in their life. It's like coactive coaching and business is no different. I very rarely am going to dictate what someone has to do. I'm going to help them come to a realization of what they need to do. Like I was on a call today and I kept probing one of my girls with questions because in my head, I'm like waiting for her to say something, but I'm asking her questions until she comes to that realization herself. Because if I just feed the words to her, then she's just going to automatically take what I said. And I don't want to do that. I want her to come to that conclusion herself because that's when that power truly comes. And everybody is so different, right? All of like the, the fundamentals and the framework is the same. You have to plan. How you plan is going to be a little bit different. How you come to the conclusions of the things that you need to do is going to be a little bit different. But it's, you know, being able to be flexible within those frameworks is so important. Yeah. I completely agree, man. I, I, it it kind of makes me think of like time blocking or like journaling, you know, like it, it's taken, it takes a really, really long time to finally kind of like get it down. And I say that and I still don't really feel like I have it down, you know, it's like, but when we, we have to like convince ourselves, like, look, like I'm playing the long game on this and like, this is for forever. Like, don't go try something like goal setting or time blocking or journaling like one time in one way and then just say it's not for you. Like there's a million different ways to do these things. It's just finding like what works best for you. Absolutely. And just like you said, like these things take time to, to master. It's just like anything, you know, when you post on social media now, it's easy. It's quick. Like it takes you a couple minutes to write a caption. You grab a picture off your phone and you're done. When you first started posting on social media, you probably spent half an hour writing a caption and like probably didn't post anything because you didn't have the right photo. And now you just understand how it all works. But it didn't come without putting the reps in. Same thing with like time blocking, same thing with journaling, same thing with meditation, same thing with planning. When I first started doing planning, the very first business coach that uh, Laura and myself hired, we sat down and we were trying to create like our vision like a big overarching vision. And like, it took us forever to do that. And then to try and come up with like two to three year goals, it took forever. And then when I look back, it was like, I wanted to create multiple locations and have like a wellness center and an international impact and like all this stuff. And like the last thing I want to do now is create a wellness center. But that's the thing is, we have to start putting pen to paper to start to get our thoughts out. We can have ideas and jot them down and revisit them at a later date, but we have to start that process because it allows us to simply sharpen that skill. And now when I plan, like I already, I literally already know what I'm going to do next week. This week isn't even over and I haven't started planning for next week because I've just conditioned myself to think a certain way. You know, we understand the concepts we're going to post in on our Instagram because we've been doing it a certain way for so long. But when you start picking up a new habit, when it comes to business, it's no different. You know, it is a pain in the ass when it starts, but you literally just have to like go through that pain knowing that it is going to get easier because like, you know, that as you're complaining about like posting on Instagram, you have a client that is complaining about food prep and you're like, man, like it takes me literally 45 minutes to prep my food, but your clients like it literally took me all day Sunday and you're like, just give it time. Just give it time. You got to be patient and you refine these skills. Absolutely, man. I couldn't agree more. I mean, literally one thing I love to do with clients is I just ask them what they do for work and they'll be like, you know, whatever, I'm a doctor. Perfect. Let's switch roles. If I, if I, if, if I threw you like right now, you came to me for nutrition coaching, right? Nutrition is your struggle. If you put me in the hospital and tell me to do what you do, do you know how long it would take me to get at your level? You know, like you can't expect to be an overnight success. Like it's just not, not reality. Um, so Landon, I want to get, I want to get a little tactical here. So, you know, we talk about goal setting, right? And a lot of people, whether this is with their nutrition clients or whether people come to you, like 
most people don't know how to, to set the goals. So if somebody came to you, you know, in terms of like the mentorship, like a business coach comes to you and they're like, Landon, like, I just need to get more clients. Cause that's probably like one of the most common, like, you know, problems that you see. Like when you want them to dig deeper and start to, you know, kind of create a five-year plan or whatever you have them do for themselves, like what happens when they come back to you and they're like, Landon, I just, I don't know what to do. Like, I just, you told me to go set these goals, but like, I just can't, like, I, I, it's all superficial stuff. I'm having a hard time expanding and, and creating that vision board. Yeah. Awesome, man. Like you're totally right. Every single person comes and they're like, I need more clients. And it's like, cool. So does everyone else. Like, just like, let's take a chill pill. Let's like check things out a little bit. The clients will come. And the reason that they don't have any clients is usually because they just like leapfrogged over like the other five things that they should have been focusing on first. But when it comes to the goal setting, you know, most people at least can come up with like a financial goal. Like they might not work. Like if they're just getting going, that's usually the only time that they really have no idea. A lot of the people that come to me, they're like, I'm an in-person trainer. I'm burnt out. I hate my life. I, I need freedom. <laughs> it's like, okay, let's, let's revisit these things. Let's, you know, transition your, your schedule. Let's get you online. Let's open up time so we can start to live that life. But when they don't know what to do, you, we just simply, we scale it back. So it's like, okay, you know, what's your, what's your two to three goal? What are these like someday goals? What are some things you would like to do? And they're like, I have no idea. I'm like, okay, well, let's go to a year. Like how much money would you like to be making in a year? And they, they can usually come up with that. So if like, if we start on the macro level and somebody just doesn't know what they want to do, we just scale it back until we can find something that they can conceptualize. You know, if, if they can't come up with something that they want to accomplish in a year, I'm going to scale that back to like three to six months. You know, right now you're, you're making X. What do you want to be making in, in three to six months? Do you want to, what would you, what changes would you like to see in your life in three to six months time? You know, what are some of these things? So we just scale it back until we can find something that they conceptualize. And then just understanding that, that is simply going to change. It's a process we want to revisit. It's even like establishing your, your ideal client. You know, that is a process that is ever evolving. And most of the time I have people start and then I tell them to redo it because it's never, it's never actually what they think it should be. And then, but I don't usually press too hard because I know that just simply with experience in the field, they just need to work with people, but I want to get them some, a little bit of a sense of the direction they're going. And then I want them to revisit it at a later date. Once they've gotten their feet wet, they've been working with some people and then they're, the wheels are going to start turning. Sometimes people just don't know what the potential actually is. And they're like, so how long do I typically work with a business coach? And I go, well, how big do you want to grow your business? Because I'm like, we could scale you up to multiple six figures to seven figures to eight figures. It's like, how, how big do you want to go? Right? Like the potential is infinite, but a lot of people when they're just getting started, they don't understand like making $10,000 a month to a, a trainer or a coach who's just starting feels like it's super far fetched. Like they can never achieve that. And I have, I have people that have like plus thousand followers on Instagram that feel like that is, you know, out of the realm of being a possibilities. And I'm like, I know people who are doing multiple six figures, high six figures into the seven figures doing exactly what you're doing. And they're just like, their mind is blown. And it's, you know, you have to start to just kind of like spoon feed people and give them the opportunity for their, just to kind of like awaken to what their actual potential could truly be within the industry. Yeah. I love that, man. It actually makes me think back to everybody that, starts college and thinks that they want to do this degree and then completely changes into the next degree. You know, it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're young, we're naive, like as you know, at, at, in terms of age or whether in terms of business or whatever. And it's like, you don't know what you don't know. Right. But if you're just sitting there and your hands are tied behind your back and like, you're not doing anything, that's the problem. Like you got to go get, you got to, you got to put in the reps. Like you got to at least start setting some goals. Like, Maybe they completely change, but like at least you're starting on the process. Yeah, exactly. And we just have to be open to the process changing. You know, I, I throw out a post on Instagram today where I was talking about um, like planning the macro and take and executing the micro. So what most people do is they don't 
have any overarching plans or goals. And then they overanalyze and obsess over the small things that don't actually matter. And it completely handcuffs them from taking action. So they'll be like, they have no idea where they're trying to go this year or how much money they're going to make or what projects or like programs are going to help them get there. But they'll be like, I can't start coaching because I don't know what software to use. I'm like, Fuck, who cares? Just start coaching. Like I'll frequently tell clients to just do things because I'm like, it's, it's not going to be perfect regardless of how much you plan it. You need to like have some structure, but then it's like, go execute it. They're like, I had a client that was interested in this program that I was thinking of rolling out. I'm like, cool, sell it to them and, and figure it out. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, like you're going to obsess over it for the next three months to try and make it perfect. It's never going to be perfect and it's going to change anyways. And the fastest way to get feedback and change things is by actually doing them. So do it, take action with the small stuff, but try and have an overarching view of where you're trying to go. Yeah, absolutely, man. I love that. I, uh, <laughs> going back to nutrition coaching, right? It's the same thing. It's like, think about how many clients that come to us and they get caught up in all of these little things, right? Like, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I? I'm like, you're not even going to the gym at all. <laughs> you know, it's like, they're like worried about programming and all this different stuff. And it's like, dude, like take a second and realize that you haven't even built a foundation yet. You know, like once we build the foundation and you get some skin in the game, like we'll dive into those minor details. But yeah, it, it's, it's just interesting. Like pretty much everything we've talked about thus far has like there's a correlation that you could make like with the people you're mentoring and, and the clients that they're working with. So I love that, man. Dude, I want to I want to dive into share with me some of I know we don't have a lot of time here, but maybe one or two stories, like some of your, your, your biggest like transformative stories of working with, with clients. Like they, they started with you. It doesn't have to go super in depth, but they started with you at this point and then you've kind of helped them get to, you know, wherever they wanted to be. Yeah, man. It, uh, it's tough because I haven't worked with a lot of people that haven't seen really, really good transformations, but what I really love seeing is the really big changes in people's lives because I'm a firm believer in it's so much more than financial. You know, it is seeing a shift in somebody's kind of like personality, being able to see somebody like their motivation is so much higher when you speak to them on the phone because of these changes that have gone through. And it's, you know, the, the one that's coming to mind is one of my girls that, you know, when I started, she was working full time for another business as a nutrition coach and, you know, being able to help her through that transition. And it was very much like letting her steer the ship and just kind of guiding her along the way was, you know, the work was, she wanted to leave on very, very good terms. And I'm like, okay, hey, cool. Like, I'm not going to tell you to like breach contracts and steal clients as much as I want you to walk away with every single client possible. We're going to do it in the most ethical way because that that's what you value. And that's where it is. It's like each individual person is going to have their unique things that are, they're going to take along that journey. And then it was like, you know, things got really sour. Tons of people were leaving. Tons of coaches were training. She gave her notice. And then it was like, they just kind of like let her exit. But, you know, she ended up walking away. And just by sheer reaching out to her clients, we were able to come up with a plan. She recouped so many clients just through some very simple strategies she was, has been able to completely exit leaving a company of like had no business before we started. Like we literally started on like, you're going to, we're going to, this is your business name and like getting her going from nothing, just working full time to she's within like two or three months has completely left her job and is making more money being self-employed and is like, I'm running errands in the middle of the day and I've never been able to do that before. And she just like, it's just things she can't fathom, but it's that changes that it's come in her life that make it so much better than the financial changes. And it's not through crazy tactics. Yes, tactics come into play, but so much of it is through, you know, just allowing people to show or allowing people to come to the realization of the things that they were actually already truly capable of. They just needed somebody to show them that they were capable of doing it. And you just act as this mentor to them 
to guide them through that journey. Yes, I'm going to give you the tools you need to execute it, but it's like helping you register your business or plan your taxes. Like I'm not this guru, but you know, I know things that work, but so much of coaching is just being able to be a soundboard, being able to be that guide that empowers the person to actually take the action. And that's truly what differentiates one coach to another because they all know the same things. But it's like, who do you connect with and who's going to be the person that is actually going to be that one that's going to help you get there? Love that, man. I love that. And I know, you know, obviously both of us having our own mentors, you know, throughout life, like, I mean, it's so true. Like, I mean, when I first started with my first business coach, it was literally, hey, here's the permission slip, you know, that you needed. Like, you didn't need it, but like, here it is, you know, and it's just crazy. Like you think back and it's just like, man, you know, I think the coolest thing is just being able to, you know, go through this ourselves and then be able to pay it forward and, and help others. Because I wish that I had a, a mentor, you know, at 18 years old when I first got into the field, like I wish I wasn't, you know, wasting $300 a month at, at the, the supplement shop, you know, filling my body with crap. You know, I wish that, you know, I, I, I could go down the whole entire list of I wish, right. But it's all part of our journey and, and, and it's what made us into who we are today. But dude, I, uh, I just think mentorship, well, finding the right mentor is, is something that's absolutely invaluable. It's just, you do have to do your due diligence and you do have to make sure that the person that you're investing in um, is not just putting up their highlight reel on Instagram, but you actually resonate with them. Yeah, absolutely. And it, that's the beauty of social media now, right? Like you can more or less see through BS when people are posting about it. And it gives you a platform for somebody like us, like, you know, yourself and me to like be authentic and put ourselves out there. And when people connect with us, you know, it makes the whole process of working with somebody so much easier because, you know, we can let people know who we are before they ever start. I absolutely agree, man. Everybody has a journey. We're not, nobody was perfect throughout their whole journey, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was, I had some Facebook ads up and I was talking about like some of my business failures over the years and somebody commented on like, you know, people are so gullible who would hire someone with who's failed. And I just laughed like, and I literally, I was polite and I was like, you know, like, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Like totally, I didn't delete it or anything. And then there was just like all these people that started commenting, just tearing them apart. And it's like, it's so true, right? Like, please name someone who is successful, who has never failed. And if I'm thinking about things personally, do you want to hire the person who has never had to, like, who's never tried something? and failed and learned from it and, and executed? Or they just like literally were like spoon fed success their entire life. Do you actually know if, if what they do works or it just worked for them and now they're just trying to teach that? Or would you rather learn from the person who's tried it all and actually found that recipe of success and now they're teaching what works so you don't make the same mistakes to them? It's like, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. I know what I would do and you just let people make the decision for themselves. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, man. You, I mean, I know that if I wouldn't have overcome all the adversity that I have in my life, like there's no way that I could help others other overcome their struggles. So um, yeah, man, it's 100% true. I completely agree. Landon, dude, thanks so much for taking the time, man. I'm, uh, I'm curious, what are, you, what are you most excited for? Like what's in the works? I feel like you always have stuff going on, but anything you can share with the audience that uh, maybe, they can, maybe they can reach out to you for? Yeah, man. Um, actually, we are about to announce tomorrow. Uh, that'll be the March 1st. We're about to announce uh, our L2 Fitness Summit for 2019. So I'm uh, really, really excited to, to get that event. If anyone's interested, uh, l2fitnesssummit.com. We have got Lauren Conlin, Dr. Gabrielle Fandero, John Meadows and uh, Alberto Nunez from uh, 3DMJ coming out to Edmonton, Alberta to speak for our big summit. We're actually going to be running a one day business event the day before. So, you know, anybody that's interested in uh, kind of picking up some business knowledge and uh, like, you know, uh, thought leaders in the, the fitness and nutrition industry um, to come out. I'm super excited. Gabrielle is going to be just like, 
destroying people's minds on like gut health and gut microbiome, which is like, you know, the biggest thing right now. So, you know, that event is probably the the most exciting thing we got going on right now. Dude, that's awesome, man. And when, so that launches, you said tomorrow, March 1st, when is the actual event? The event is September. So September 28th to 29th. And then uh, the business thing will be the, the preceding day on the 27th. Awesome, my man. Well, dude, I know how legit the last one was. So uh, that's exciting. Y'all have to go check out that website and you have more information on the speakers and stuff on there, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, dude, Landon, other than that, uh, Instagram, website, where's all that stuff? Where can people find you? Yeah, totally, man. Uh, Instagram at Landon Pobrin. So it's just my name, L-A-N-D-O-N-P-O-B-U-R-A-N. Website is LandonP.com. You can find out more information about me, uh, links to my podcast, everything. Most active on Instagram these days. So, you know, check out the, the IG, check out the website. That'd be fantastic. Thank you very much, man. Thanks, Landon. Appreciate it, buddy.